It's been 10 years since CRISPR, a new method for DNA editing, was published. At the time, it did not make headline news. But after a decade, CRISPR has become the leading way to edit DNA and is currently being used on our food, animals, and even people. CRISPR is only going to become more prevalent, and so it is important to understand what it is, how it's being used, and the ethical concerns around its use. Is DNA editing a tool which can be used to better our society, or could it only lead to social division and the destruction of our ecosystem? CRISPR is a method of DNA editing, initially developed by Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dunder, and first published in June 2012. Essentially, CRISPR is just a way for scientists to identify a strand of DNA they want to change, cut it out, and insert a new programmed strand of DNA in its place. This method was discovered through bacteria, which have similar built-in gene editing systems which act as their immune system. So many bacteria have in their cells an adaptive immune system called CRISPR that we realized that we could harness its function as a genetic engineering technology, a way for scientists to delete or insert specific bits of DNA into cells with incredible precision that would offer opportunities to do things that really haven't been possible in the past. Now, it is the simplest and most common way to edit DNA. So, let's look at exactly how it's being used today. Within agriculture, crops have been genetically altered to withstand disease or resist extreme weather conditions caused by global warming. For example, Inari agriculture are breeding soybeans that require less water and fertilizer. Dr. Karen Massell is making sorghum both frost and heat tolerant. The International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center is breeding disease-resistant cassavas and drought-resistant bananas. And even botanist Kathy Martin created tomatoes that are rich in vitamin D. All these advancements could very well benefit poorer nations. However, they could also just end up enriching the only agricultural business giants that can afford to invest in this technology. When it comes to animals, CRISPR is mainly used to help prevent the spread of diseases. There are constant studies of CRISPR-edited mosquitoes to reduce the spread of malaria. There is also a project known as Mice Against Ticks underway, where scientists are genetically altering mice to be Lyme disease resistant and are planning on releasing them on the island of Nantucket in the US. So our idea is, well, how about we take mice that are naturally immune, identify the DNA in their genomes that makes them immune, and then take the best such elements and put them all into one engineered strain of mice. There is, however, a significant amount of concern over the environmental impacts of this project. So the number one question we get is, is this going to cause unexpected ecological effects? And the answer is, we don't know for sure. What does this mean about our indoor-outdoor cats or our birds of prey? How is that going to affect them if they eat the genetically modified mice? Any small change to our ecosystem can have really damaging, unforeseen consequences. Take cane toads in Australia, for example, originally introduced to reduce the number of beetles that were destroying sugarcane crops. They are now one of the biggest pests in Australia. Any change to the ecosystem, no matter how small or good-natured it may seem, needs to be taken with extreme caution. The most controversial use of CRISPR to date is the way it is used on human DNA. Gene editing is currently being used to fight cancer. In 2012, a six-year-old girl suffering from acute lymphoblastic leukemia was told after many months of unsuccessful chemotherapy that she was going to die. However, the family instead tried an experimental gene editing treatment. And now, a decade on, she's completely cancer-free. You know, we were so thankful that when we finally uh, were out of options at our local hospital that uh, the uh, CAR T-cell trial had opened the day before I texted oh, them wow. and said, we're not ready to go home on hospice because they said, you know, we're going to send you home and enjoy the mm. days you have left with Emily. Various diseases are also being treated the same way as we speak. This includes sickle cell anemia, where a recent trial revealed that none of the 31 patients experienced painful drops in oxygen 
that would have normally sent them to hospital. But these trials are all on consenting human adults. In 2018, Dr. He Jiankui, a biophysicist in China, edited the genes in three embryos to be resistant to HIV. He then implanted them in women who gave birth to the first ever gene-edited babies. Right after we sent her husband's sperm into her egg, we're also sending a little bit of protein and instruction for a gene surgery. This rash action sent shockwaves across the world. A line has been crossed that should not have been crossed. It's very disturbing. It's inappropriate. Oh, this is huge. And in 2019, Dr. Hurt was sentenced to three years in prison for illegal medical practices as a deterrent to any other scientist planning on doing a similar thing. But Dr. Hurt is out of prison now and scientists have continued to use CRISPR on human embryos without implanting them. Genome engineered animals and plants are happening right now. And this puts in front of all of us a huge responsibility to consider carefully both the unintended consequences as well as the intended impacts of a scientific breakthrough. It is very likely that CRISPR will become commonplace in preventing and treating disease. And with this comes serious ethical considerations. Will gene editing increase the livelihood of the poor and vulnerable? Or will it only be affordable to the rich, creating an even wider social divide? Where is the line between improving the health and well-being of society and falling into eugenics? Should we be removing disorders from babies such as Down syndrome that perhaps shouldn't be viewed as disorders? Or making decisions for embryos that can't consent? It is more important now than ever that these questions are considered and that laws are put in place to prevent the misuse of this fast-growing technology.